Hi everyone, Barnaby here, as you know, electric car converts. Um, we're in one that you may not have seen before, it's a Red 90. Um, and we thought, well, as you guys know it, we always put the same system in our cars. Um, so battery box up the front, maybe a seat box battery pack, Tesla Model 3 motor. Um, so this is our latest one, it's just started testing. Treacle's yawning, because she's a bit bored already, because she was just out chasing the car, but needs a must. Um, so this one is not your tra Chelsea tractor. This is your proper rugged, you know, farm vehicle, off-road vehicle, it actually lives in um, Cornwall and it's a bit rough around the edges, which actually we like because it's back to our beginnings. It's back to what we started this company as, you know, a low cost way to get into EV conversions rather than it only being accessible to those who can afford 150 grand car, which this very clearly is not when we show you the outside, but still has got a state-of-the-art electric drivetrain underneath and it's still a fantastic car, but you can sort of hit it and the doors are full of rust and whatever. It doesn't really matter. The chassis is pretty good. The bulkhead's galvanized. So the important bits are good, but it's a 90 something Defender. 90% of them are like this. Just the ones we usually work on are so posh and fancy and blah, 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 wouldn't even touch a bit of mud in their lives. So. That means it's a bit exciting for us because we can actually test this one properly as a Defender is intended to be tested or used um, on an off-road track like this, um, which is just a little bit more fun, I suppose, for us and something we don't often get to do. So first thing I'm testing, we're actually already sort of halfway up this hill. There's not that many off-road places around us. I mean, these are only green lanes. Not, I'm not trying to say that we're doing like mega off-roading here because we're not. I pump the tires up nice and hard to get good range for when the client drives back to Cornwall next weekend. But we just thought, you know, it's fun. And, you know, it's, it's, we're not hard coring this. We're just green naming ultimately, but it's quite a nice hill here. First thing to test is the electric handbrake. So this is one of our options. In fact, let me take that out so you can nicely see that made by Willwood. Um, and it works just as an electric handbrake does in your OEM car. You know, most of them have got it now, even the petrol ones. But it seems really, really, really stuck here, or even on this quite a, quite a hill here. Um, so let's do some off-roading and see how she fares. I'll turn the handbrake off like this. And then I'll stick her into drive. And let's see. Oh, off-roading is really... Easy and boring. I don't have to change gears. I don't have to rev it. We are currently pulling, it's not even re registering on the amp meter. So we're pulling like probably 50 amps maybe at 400 volts. It's still a lot of power, but you know, it's not like we're going rrr, 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 drop the clutch like we would be if we were, if we were in a diesel one. But you can see how she just sort of takes it in her stride, bounces around. In fact, absolutely loves it. In fact, this is actually quite fun. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> um, nothing really to say, off-roading is kind of maybe, 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 maybe. Let your handbrake on for this one. That's really good. Um, maybe electric conversions have a downside because off-roading is maybe used to be a bit of a skill, you know, selecting the right gear, selecting the right transfer box, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, whatever it, the gubbins was that is now a flat floor, which you can quickly see there. That's where the dog likes to sit. Look, flat floor, no rubbish there. No, not even any handbrake lever in the way of your leg. It's very disconcerting. In fact, every time I set off, I try and let the handbrake off down here because I'm so used to defenders. But yeah, could be a downside of electric conversions. They're a bit boring off-road. Sorry, guys. That sucks. Handbrake off, foot down. Whoop-ba! Bye-bye. <laughs> she absolutely loves it, <laughs> to be honest. Whoa. <laughs> um, let's see what happens when we get to the top here. But yeah, pretty unremarkable, I suppose. What else is there to say? So obviously we've got power steering on. Um, well, it's always on. It's hydraulic power steering in this. We, we have it as an option, but 
usually it's not really needed, I suppose. Um, so you can hear the pump sometimes churning up when I'm going around big bits off-road. Um, we haven't got the heater on because it's eight, end of April. Um, this one's been in our, this car's been in our workshop about five, six weeks. I don't know, the owner will know because um, he's very excited to get it back, as all of them are. But um, it's a very quick job, very quick turnaround. You know, we, were, we sat on our waiting list for about six months and then off we went. Um, but I think let's park up the top here and do a bit of a walk around of it. So I will stick it there, handbrake on. And see that, I instantly go to here. It's really weird, I keep trying to go to the handbrake, but I don't need to. Car's off. Let's let the dog out. Go, go. And go and see what is under the bonnet. Are you coming out this way? All right. Right. So, same old, really. I only just put the bonnet on yesterday because we've been, ow. That goes there. Felton 55 kilowatt hour batch pack. Um, now we're actually at a stage now where all of our cars are upgradable. So this car can come back to us in three years time, four years time, and we can add the new Seatbox 55 kilowatt hour, which would upgrade this to 110 kilowatt hours of battery pack, which would be just shy of 300 miles of range if you drive sensibly, um, which is pretty big. That's, I think, bigger than the biggest Tesla until they bought the Cybertruck out, which may be bigger than that. I don't know. Um, heater in there, power steering in there, two rads, all of our controls under there, all of our fuse boxes, relays, all that kind of gubbins. Um, but all just very neat. You can come in and have a close look at how sort of neat she looks. Um, but in a car that hasn't spent the last two years being restored. Look. Dirty old, dirty old bonnet. Come and have a look at this door. This is, this is not a Chelsea tractor and I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, so much so that the owner cut a little porthole for his dog so that he could stick his little head out of there and it's made all of this, what is it called when aluminium doesn't rust, it oxidizes. It's caused all this oxidization because of dissimilar metals, I suppose, according to my engineers. Um, there's like paint missing, there's rust spots, there's, come around the back, the mud flaps have flapped off, flapping hell. But the important things, don't just come to me and give me an absolute shit car, okay? Because the important things are good. The chassis was new about 10 years ago. It's not galvanized, but it's, you know, nice, no rust on it. The bulkhead is brand new. The axles are strong. The suspension is good. Just, it's a bit of a sleeper, as I suppose, what I'm trying to put across here. Um, so, electric Land Rover. We're gonna go and get some shots of it, maybe like coming up the hill so you can see maybe how steep it is. I know it's impossible to say how steep it is in a camera um, or on a video, but look, even the indicator's flapped off. And also don't ask electric car converts to fix your indicators because we can build these, we build one a month and that's with a team of three of us now. We can't spend time fixing that. It sounds like such a simple and small job, but honestly, those little jobs can so quickly amount up and add up and add up and add up. And then suddenly you've taken two days and two days is two thirtieths or 6% of the time we have to build this car. So you can imagine why we're quite strict about not doing the other bits. As always, we'll do a quick motor look. Um. Is it there? There's the Model 3 motor. Pretty nice. Um, and you can see on the see the chassis and good nick. Um, you can do it with the paint, but the owner's gonna do that when he gets back. 
Um, so we'll go and get some footage of it from outside the car now. So this is Treacle. She's gonna, she likes walking along. This is actually the best way ever. Look, handbrake off. This is the best way. Treacle! This is the best way to walk a dog. Look, in an electric Land Rover. You're not, you're not annoying the neighbors. You're not annoying the farmers. You walk your dog. We're actually putting power into the pack right now to make sure we can get home. I'm not touching any pedals. She can probably see down there. Um, and we're just regening our way down the hill. Woohoo! No, she absolutely loves it. That's the main thing. Oh, it's a bit bouncy. Um, so yeah, I still haven't even touched the pedal yet. I'm just, I'm just the driver. This is actually an autonomous downhill off-road vehicle. Maybe. Um, yeah, it's. I think in in general, it's really hard to show off-roading because, well there isn't a lot of it around here and especially this time of year most of the bridleways tree cult most of the bridleways are shut um but this is a chalk one so it's all right um it's pretty steep it probably doesn't look that steep in the video but it you know we are really really not trying and it's just like whoop, up you go obviously it's got an lsd in it inside the motor so that really helps with any wheel slip that we would get these are quite roadish tires um but yeah there's a bit of off-roading for you Probably not the longest video or the best video, but if anyone has any land in East Sussex and they don't mind us coming to, whoop, they don't mind us coming to do a little bit of razzing round, we've got three big Puma 110s about to be finished in the workshop, um, which will be really good to do like a proper off-roading video where we actually go and find some big space um, and some big puddles, etc. So if anyone's got any land near us, let us know. We'd love to come and have a go. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, that's the end of today's episode. Well, I'm just about to put, I just took some photos of this car up the top, so I'll put them on the website and you can see some stats of this car, but really, you know them. It's the same as always. Um, and if you've got one of these and you're thinking it might be better electric, which it is, give me a ring 07 413 296 293. Thanks for watching.